And I'd love the opportunity to lead us in a time of hopefulness as we pray for God's hope. And um, I want to read a few words it's found in the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. 17th verse says, and we are his children. We are his heirs. In fact, together we are joint heirs with Christ in God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. It reminds me of a very familiar story of a young boy who was about to have open heart surgery. And the surgeon was explaining to the boy's parents what was about to happen. And he said, I am going to uh, open up his heart. And the boy was laying there as they were preparing him for surgery. And the boy, he blurted out, and you're going to find Jesus in there. Uh, surgeon. The surgeon shook it off a little bit, turned back to the boy's parents and said, actually, I'm going to open up his heart and I've got to evaluate a few things because it seems as though there may be some damage to his aorta and pulmonary arteries and such. And uh, we've got to figure it out. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to open him up and the boy blurted out again and you're going to find Jesus in there. This time the surgeon got quite a bit frustrated and the surgeon said, I tell you what I'm really going to find. I'm probably going to find that there's quite a bit of damage. And uh, we're going to have to figure out a prognosis and come up with a recovery time and see if we can really make you better, son. And so when I open you up, and he was going to try and explain this surgeon, and as soon as he said, I'm going to open you up, that boy said one more time, you're going to find Jesus in there. So the surgeon just left the room. They prepared the young boy for the surgery. And when the day of the surgery came, the surgeon, he did what he had to do. Then when the surgery was done, he was preparing his notes. He realized that the boy had so much damage that it seems as though the boy would only have about a year to live at max. And so the surgeon he didn't know what to do he just paused for a second and he said he said god why would you do this why would you allow this boy your child to experience this type of pain he's going to be taken from his loved ones and only have months to live a year at most and god responded this is my child he was given for my purpose and he will be reunited with his loved ones but the reason why he's here at this moment is because there's one person that needs to experience my son Jesus and that's you the surgeon started shedding some tears he wrapped up his notes he went back and told the family what he found. And young boy, he'd been awakened by now. And the young boy, he said, Doc, what did you find when you opened up my heart? And the doctor said, Son, I found Jesus. And so I believe that the words of the Apostle Paul are very true when he continues and says that I believe that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. He says that we as believers, we groan even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering we too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children. We wait patiently and confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us with our weaknesses. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. 
And so what shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he didn't even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything? Who then will condemn us? For Christ Jesus died for us all. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus who loves us. Paul ends by saying, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed through Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? Come on, do you really believe that? Nothing can separate us from God's love. So we're going to pray this final prayer. It's a prayer of hope that regardless of where you may be, and I am well aware in a room with this many people, you're going through all different types of difficulties, including the ones that we're going through together as a community. I pray regardless of what you're going through, you will find Jesus in the midst of your storm. And so would you just uh, link up or either surround yourself uh, with the people that you just did as I pray? You are welcome to pray with me with bowed heads. God, we are so grateful. We're grateful because your son Jesus is our hope. We have no recourse by putting our hope in people or in things, possessions, not even memories, but our hope is in Jesus. And so I pray, my brothers and sisters, myself, for families that are negatively affected, that are trying to figure out their faith in the midst of newspaper articles and television stories. I pray that they and us, we would see you more clearly now than we ever have before. I pray that the world would know that there is hope and that hope is in Jesus. And that regardless, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. This is our desire now. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. If you agree with that prayer, would you say amen? Amen. amen.